been sitting here all day. Uh, my name is Jeff Shipley. I run a soccer school company here in town. I'm going to start off by, by introducing our speaker, but before I do that, I want to do some housekeeping things. Um, if you haven't gone to the bathroom yet, I suggest you do that at some point today. <laughs> Women's is right here. Men's is all the way down there. Um, I believe there's other bathrooms in the building somewhere. I know nothing about them, so you're on your own. Um, we had a fantastic turnout today, far exceeded our expectations. Um, we're well above 700 people here today. Um, didn't quite plan on it, so it's a little bit crowded, and I, and I apologize for that. I will ask you to be courteous because there's so many people. We've got food, um, at, at, obviously, at noon. Um, be respectful. You know, Don't go back for three helpings. Um, make sure everybody gets a little bit of food in their stomach. Um, and again, um, enjoy yourself, network, don't, don't hesitate to, to reach out to someone you don't know and say hi. Um, any questions, look for the guys in the yellow vest and uh, we'll make up something. Um, and with that, I will, I will go ahead and introduce our first speaker here. Um, Eric Lee is a uh, senior technology expert, architect at, um, in areas of virtualization and cloud for CERN. Um, spent about 24 years in, in uh, industry in charge of infrastructure around health system, EMR systems, you know what Cerner does, you got kind of an idea of what he has to deal with, um, travels the globe uh, for implementation and support of Cerner. And with that, um, I will turn it over. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. Um, first off, this session is going to be a little bit different than most of the sessions you see today. Um, most of the sessions are through personal experiences, but mainly dealing with technology. This is going to stay primarily on the personal side. Um, um, this. So again, about me, there's a little loop. Uh, almost 25 years in IT. I'm kind of the weird guy in IT. I'm not into a lot of the sci-fi or the Marvel or stuff like that. Grew up in central Kansas, so I like to go dirt track racing, um, playing some sports, and uh, hanging out with that. My daughters love going to the dirt track with me, so it's a lot of fun. All right, <clears throat> my first 15 years in IT, I'd only heard about IT burnout twice ever. Um, both of the times is when somebody that was in the small community that I was dealing with had committed suicide. Okay, we talked about it for a couple weeks. We may have donated a little bit of money to the family. You know, you may have said something. All oh, this is terrible. We need to do something about it. And then within a couple weeks, what happens? You go back to your daily life. Nobody ever thinks about it again. Nobody ever talks about it again. Um, IT burnout was completely gone from my mind, as it is with everybody else. But after going through it twice. It's on my mind every day. But we still don't talk about this topic in the IT community as much as we should. If we're gonna be there for each other to talk about the technologies and help each other in that way, we need to talk and help each other out with the soft skills, career, mental health, and everything else in the same way. So this is my journey through IT burnout. I grew up in a busy family. Uh, I had two brothers. I had 20, I have 20, 21 cousins, all of which all of them but one are boys. Crazy. I was a free range family. So basically the rule was I had to be home before dinner. Uh, ran around the neighborhoods, BB gun wars, kick the can, riding bikes, getting into a lot of this shit. Um, as I grew up, I played baseball and golf, uh, played competitive soccer all throughout the Midwest. When I got older, um, I helped my best friend since first day of kindergarten build this race car. We borrowed his dad's flatbed truck with the junkyard bought the car, brought it home, gutted it, put it all together, and went racing with it. Um, my little brothers in the bottom right and did the same thing, too. My parents got married when they were 18. Had my older brother when they were 19, 22 for me, 25 for my younger brother. We didn't have a lot. We weren't poor, but we weren't rich. Um, they worked a lot of hours to provide for us, so they didn't show up to a lot of our activities. When I graduated high school, I moved to Kansas City to play soccer. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I was on my own, completely on my own, physically, mentally, and financially. My dad gave me $20 for gas and said, good luck, son, right? Um, two years I played soccer, my mom only saw me play one time, and that was when I played close to home that she could make. Um, not only do I go to school full time, and I played soccer, and all the stuff that went around it, um, I worked full time in order to pay for room and board and everything that was there. Uh, I was working in the IT industry at a company that was great, but it didn't pay for everything. One year, I even had 11 W-2s. That's kind of hard to do, okay? It's really hard to do. Um, when I got through to four-year college, I even held positions on an executive board while working 40, 50 hours a week to pay for school. I was busy. 
busy all the time. Okay, I didn't know anything different. So to me, just being busy is not IT burnout. Okay, even in the, even when I'm busy at work, just being busy by itself is not IT workout. Um, after college, uh, I was full time finally at work, <clears throat> even though I've been full time for a long time. A uh, company I worked for had been bought along with four other companies in the U.S., and I spent the next two years doing a back-end systems integration for them. It went so well that they made they asked me to do it again globally for the next two years. So for those four years, I spent 80% of my time traveling the globe doing back-end systems integrations. Um, I felt the stress of getting the job done that week. I could work up to 90 hours, sometimes 100 hours that week um, to do implementations and cutovers and everything like that. It was stressful, but when it was done with that implementation that week, stress was gone. I would go home, I'd have a good time with my friends, I'd play softball and stuff like that when I could, um, but I didn't feel down, I didn't feel changed in any certain way. So to me, just working long hours by itself isn't IT burnout. During the last couple years of the project, and a few years after that, uh, I noticed a cultural shift at the company I worked at. Um, none of our internal customers were happy with us anymore. Um, my projects were no longer getting fully funded. Um, the good teammates were leaving, and there was a definite morale change in the area. Um, I was not happy with work. I was not happy with a lot of things going on there. And I was actually pissed off because the manufacturing side of the company I worked at had started hiring their own IT. So much that they started deploying their own servers, their own systems, right next to ours. Okay? Um, it turns out that my boss now reported to the CFO. Right? And in a manufacturing company, if they report to the CFO, my boss's compensation was directly related to how much money from the budget he saved, not whether the projects got implemented correctly. So in order for me to get a project done, I had to get it approved and then cut money from it in order for him to allow us to do it. Um, by this time, I'd worked at the company almost 11 years, just over 11 years. Uh, we implemented a ton of things. Um, like I said, the back end systems integration and all that stuff. The company grew, we became, became more efficient because of those, we became, became more profitable. I could see it. I bought into the company. I felt like I was an absolute part of the company. I didn't want to move on from the company because of it. But to me, not liking your boss because of how he's being compensated, not liking some of the people you work with alone is not IT burnout. The stress of completing these projects were hard enough. Um, it's even more stressful when you care about the, the project, when you care about the company, and you can see how it's going to benefit. I didn't know how much until one day I was watching TV with my wife. Um, this is pre kids and everything. And my wife looked up at me and she said, What are you thinking about? And I was like, Why? And she goes, Look at your hand. And my left hand was shaking like this. If I was trying to hold a remote, there was no way I could do it. <clears throat> Took a look at my right hand, and my right hand had a little tremor in it as well, too. So she asked me what I was thinking about. I had no idea. But after looking at it, I could tell I was just thinking about work and all this stupid stuff going on at work. I was infatuated with it, obsessed. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So we started talking about it, and we started looking at other symptoms over the next few weeks. And these are a lot of the symptoms that I noticed that I didn't see before. Um, some of the worst is I speak sarcasm as a primary language in my household. My kids are great at it already. Um, but my sarcasm took on a different tone. It took on a snarkiness, right? When you start getting snarky um, or snapping for the dumbest things, there's something wrong, and that's a trigger that you need to pay attention to what's going on here. Okay. I no longer wanted to do things that I did before. I didn't want to go hang out with my friends, uh, do some of that stuff. I got so wrapped up into my work in a company that I wasn't looking out for my own mental and physical health. My wife saw some of these signs before, but we didn't ever talk about it. Um, I didn't want to be at the company anymore, but I didn't want to leave because of all the work that I put in over the years. I was burned out on the job, the situation, um, my boss, the tech I was dealing with, the hours, all of it. So what did I do about it? Uh, actually, not much. Um, or it could be a lot if you're afraid of change. 
uh, I just got a new job. It took me a little while to find one. I was nervous. Anybody who worked at one place for a long time, you think, I can't go anywhere else, right? It's a tough decision. Um, within two weeks of starting my new job, though, uh, once I got comfortable with my surroundings and realized that I wasn't an imposter and I actually knew what I was talking about there, uh, the shaking went away, uh, the snarkiness went away, all those symptoms went away. I'm healed. Right? Uh, wrong. Because what did I actually change? Really not. So this new job, I worked about three and a half years. I had a ton of stressful projects, um, worked long hours. Uh, it was in the advertising industry. This is about 2008. What happened? Recession. So we had stressful things going on there as well, too. Um, but looking at myself and paying attention and looking back now, um, there was no signs of IT burnout. I love the people I worked with. I loved what I was doing, okay? So just having those symptoms or just having those things to me by themselves is an IT burnout. During this time, an opportunity came up to go work at a, uh, comp at a software development shop. They were starting their CI CD process. They wanted to automate everything from start to finish that they could. Um, so I jumped at the opportunity. There, when I started, there was a lot of meetings with all different teams. What was great was from the VP down, they all wanted this. They were all driving for it. Everybody is on the same page. Um, we took a process that was manual server builds once a week for testing processes and got it done every 12 hours. Automated, start to finish, and all the developers would just have a report in their inbox for the stuff that they did. It was awesome. VP loved it, everybody saw the benefit of it, it was awesome. My primary job was to look at any tool, any system, any architecture that would help the process go faster. Best job I ever had in my whole entire life. I'm gonna go to a conference, how's it gonna help? Well, I think it might be this, sure, go, right? Oh, I wanna go see this company about this, what do you think they're gonna do? Oh, I think this, go. It was phenomenal. The most challenging part of the job was every year I put on a client conference and I was in charge of the lab systems. It would take me three to four months to get the whole lab system set up. The interface, um, the back end system, everything except for the content. Our different departments were in charge of the content. One year, we were taking the conference on the road. I decided to use a cloud vendor instead of loading up hardware and trying to get it down. Um, the cloud vendor promised me that this functionality would be there. Uh, five days before the conference, it still wasn't working. I was getting ready to leave to Orlando and I was panicking. I had to find gear, a rack, networking, everything, get it boxed up, get it on a truck, ship it to Orlando to be there in a couple days so when I arrived, I could get it all set up. My coworker said, Eric, look at your hand. I looked at my hand and I was shaking again. Nowhere near where it was a few years before, but there it was again. We were so busy, I didn't really have much time to think about it. Once we got to Orlando in a couple days, I touched base with the vendor again. We ran another system test. They finally fixed their issue. Everything was great. All of a sudden, shaking was completely gone. Okay? Skip that. Sorry. Um, we sat down, and I talked to my coworker, who I was pretty good friends with, and we started looking at all the other symptoms that I'd had previously. Luckily, I didn't have any of those. So we just chopped it up to the stress of the cloud vendor not meeting our needs. During this time though, I was being recruited by a bar. Um, they wanted me to come in and, and teach all of their clients the um, CICD processes and automation and stuff that we were doing. Um, I didn't really pay attention to them for quite a while because I didn't like some of the management that was there. Um, I really didn't like that. <laughs> uh, but this time though, the management had retired and left. Uh, I had multiple co ex coworkers that had been there for many years. They said the company had changed, and they were really recruiting me to come in and help change all these other vendors, uh, or customers. So I thought it was a great opportunity to get away. The first nine months was phenomenal. Uh, I had fit in really well with my account managers. Um, I fit in great with a lot of the customers. I helped some customers transition and paved the path to where they are now. It was awesome. All seemed well. Then some of the people I didn't care for all of a sudden came back. Practices I didn't like started showing up more often. Um, Off-the-cuff decisions were made that a lot of people felt were detrimental. Um, 
things were being published to all sales staff that I thought was not proper to do. It was really weird. Um, and then I got blasted across the, an email across the whole entire company for two things I had nothing to do with. Um, when it was found out that I had nothing to do with it, I never got an apology from any of those people at all either. Then I lost half of my accounts because they hired another person without telling me. Uh, anybody that's ever been in sales, when you lose half your accounts, um, but your quota doesn't change, uh, basically, at this time, I had two kids. I was a sole provider in my family, and when you're in sales and you're not going to make any of your bonuses off your quotas, uh, that's a huge hit to your income. Uh, so that's very, very stressful. All I could think about, though, was I left the best job I ever had for this crap. Over and over and over again. So by this time, depression was setting in. I was burnt out on the technology that I was working with, um, I've grown so much in the company, I was responsible for teaching the other people in my swim lane those technologies, but I was not getting benefit for it as well, too. Every time I needed to write a statement at work or teach somebody something, all I could think about was I left the best job I ever had for this. I would sit around, I would stare into space, it would take me forever to get back on the project. Right? I was fading into a horrible, Depression. So let's talk about what IT burnout is to me. In the simplest terms, it's any combination of all of these things that causes you to stop being who you really are. Okay? Because that's going to mean something different to each and every individual here. Right? Just because you go into IT burnout doesn't mean you're directly going to go into um, suicide or anything like that. Right? Everybody has different levels of where you're going to be at. But in the simplest form, you're no longer going to be who you normally are. And that should be your first trigger, that something's not right. And let's talk about suicide for a second. Many people are saying, he's up there talking about IT burnout, and I haven't heard suicide until just now. Well, I spent many a night, many of hours, in parking lots, parks, staring out into space, thinking about no longer being here. Thinking about it would be better for me to no longer be here. I wouldn't have the stress. My wife wouldn't have to deal with me. My kids who were being affected by the way I was acting and feeling wouldn't have to be around that anymore. But I relate it to this. Um, they were short thoughts, but no real plan on how I would do it. And I would relate it to seeing an exotic island on a video or something, you go, hey, I want to go there. But never getting on Expedia or Travelocity and actually looking to see how many boats and planes and everything else it would take to get there. I never thought about exactly how I would do it. It was more up the line of, I shouldn't be here anymore and it'd be better off. Okay? So, let's talk about the trigger. How did I get out of the depression state? Luckily, I had some good friends in the community that noticed it, and they pulled me aside, and they wanted to talk about it. But growing up, I never talked about anything. Back to the earlier, grew up in a whole bunch of boys. If you didn't feel good mentally, you need to go get some chores done, and you'll feel better when you're when that's over, right? Other people are late, I'm sure, right? So one day I was with a very good friend of mine, and we were at a bar drinking, uh, having a couple beers, not a lot. And he was jabbering on, asking me a question, and I was just staring off in his face. So he asked me what I was thinking about. And I was like, nah. So finally I gave in and told him. I said I left the best job I ever had in my whole entire world for this crappy job. And then I got out of that job and went to another job I still don't like you. And this was his response. You know what? He was right. Um, sometimes you just need somebody to call it the way it is, to kick you in the butt to get you moving. <coughs> so what did I have to do? I had to come up with some strategies. I started off slow with one, and I've gradually added these over time. And we'll go through these pretty quick. First, I had to set up my support system. I had to get rid of the negative Nancys in my group, negative Nellies, whatever you want to call them. People that just complain about everything, including on Twitter and social media. You don't need that in your life. You hear it over and over again, you become one of those people. Okay? I also had to talk to my boss, and this is very, very important and very, very hard to do. I had to get him on the same page as me. 
I wanted him to understand when I got into the, some of these env environments or what the triggers were that would get me there so that he could help be an advocate for me and help try to deflect some of that. I also wanted him to know how I like praise and how I like criticism so that he wasn't giving it to me in the wrong way. Second, I had to get organized. Um, started using to-do lists. I got everything out of my inbox. I use inbox zero for this. So I'm not constantly looking at all the things I have to do on my list. It's called the Zarnian inactive effect or whatever. There's a blog post on the internet. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> um, the other thing is my wife's a teacher. I had to get her to use a shared calendar. It was the hardest thing to do. She's used to that paper calendar in her room. With two kids and activities going on for all of us, wasn't working anymore. Third, I had to make time for myself. And this is the hardest thing to do when you have kids. Okay? Um, you have vacation time. Use it. Um, I go on trips to go see races and stuff with my family. Um, go play golf, get away, build something, whatever you're into. It also means that I take a 20 minute walk every single day no matter what, whether by myself or with somebody else. If it's with somebody else, we do not talk about work. Not allowed. Anything but work, okay? Fourth, every week I reflect on where I came from. Remember I talked about my parents got married when they were 18? Look where I'm at now, right? I should be proud of that instead of thinking about where I haven't gotten to yet. Think about the certifications you received. Think about the praise you've received for completing projects. Keep track of those things. Put them in a folder and review those. It helps a ton. Um, fifth thing I added was volunteering. I worked with a group called uh, Team Rubicon. Uh, 2017, I went down for Hurricane Harvey for eight days. Um, you think you got it bad and then you see people in tent cities and everything else? That's a little perspective on things. You come back rejuvenated and ready to go. I've got a blog post on this if you ever want to see about that too. Uh, check it out. Um, the last thing I did is reach out to others. Okay, And this is very, very, very important which is what I'm doing right now and presenting, right? Um, I set up recurring meetings with part of my support group. Happens every week. I have taco Mondays with a group of people. We have barbecue Fridays with another group of people. Um, I have one-on-ones with some other people that are in re reoccurring time slots. We change up those reoccurring time slots so we don't get into that little habit of, oh, it's the same thing we get together, right? So do this. First time I presented this session, uh, I was nervous as all get out. Just a couple people that were here that were there at that time. Um, people came up and said, thank you so much. This is, I got more out of this session than any other session I've been to in the last few years. And then I received this email this night, last, that night. If you don't think you're helping people by sharing and doing things, you're wrong. Um, I cried. It was very good. OK. If you're a manager, what can you do? Um, the biggest thing is no company resources that are available. Uh, I didn't know that most of the places I've worked recently, um, there's multiple uh, therapy sessions available for free as part of your benefits package. If you're a manager, find out what's available, find out what the reporting chain is, and find out what resources you have available for your employees, and do some of the other things we've talked about. All right. In closing, what can you do? Um, search for the clues in your life that are changing. Uh, look very closely because it's not easy to find them up front. I know firsthand, we talked about this, right? Um, try different strategies. Start out with one, add more, take them away if they're not working. I've changed a few of them. Um, don't get complacent with them. And finally, like I just said, we can't just rely on others to help us. We're here to help each other, right? Do what you can, pay it forward. Again, here's the resource slide from earlier. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I've had my Twitter handle on the bottom for this the whole entire time. My DMs are open. I'm willing to talk. More importantly, I'm willing to listen. Okay. Um, if you don't want to talk to me or you don't have another group to talk with, here's some resources that you can reach out to for free. Um, these are blog posts. Uh, mental health and IT, there's a ton of links on other presentations and resources to get help. Uh, the effect. Uh, is really cool, right? This is a uh, this is all about focusing on the things that you haven't got done versus paying attention to the things that you have completed. Uh, Inbox Zero, this helped me tremendously over the years, and then a couple other blog posts that have been out there about mental health uh, and IT stuff. And with that.
for 24, 25 years as well. So uh, that one touched me personally. So uh, probably I think will be the best conference uh, session. <laughs> Thank you for attending. You got about five minutes to get to the next session. <laughs> so is that right? Yep. Right. About five too. Thanks everyone.